get your balls to the wall, man. <laughs> That's except there with balls to the wall for y'all. Yeah, right here, live on com. This is Grimner. It is Friday night, May 10, 2019, and this is Balls to the Wall. That's right, Miss Moose Girl is out on the town enjoying some music by a band called Big Woo. Big Woo Hoo. Ah, uh, so uh, she's out there having a good old time, I'm assuming. She's having a good old time, anyway, out there in the, her, her hometown of Eau Claire, Wisconsin. And I'm not. I'm here in my hometown, my new hometown. New? Yeah, well, whatever. It's my hometown now, Moriarty, uh, New Mexico. So, uh, yeah, welcome to everybody out there in all the various places you may be listening in from. But if you're not there on RealLibertyMedia.com, on the show page, on the Freakers Ball show page, by the way. Yeah, it's normally Freakers Ball, but when I do Balls to the Wall, when Moose Girl's not around, it's still on the Freakers Ball show page. So come on over. Jump on onto the page. You check out the video. You can check out the uh, the chat there. Or you can just keep on listening from your from your audio streams and all the places that goes. RLMRadio.xyz freedomsnetwork.com, realliberty.org, tune in, internet, radio, and so on, and so forth. So how the hell are y'all doing out there tonight? Hopefully you're doing fine. Now, you know, today, uh, as I said earlier, it's May 10, 2019. May 10! Now that means that spring has been underway for a good <laughs> while. <laughs> and and this far in the spring, uh, you're not supposed to get snow, but that's what happened here today. There was snow right here in lovely Moriarty, New Mexico. Uh, I, 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 it wasn't it wasn't called for by any of the weather guessers, you know, that said there was going to be snow, but there was freaking snow. Now. Uh, people have asked me a couple times there in the various chats here on, on irc.freenode.net whether or not I'd covered up my my plants that I my plants that I've been trying to grow, and I did not. However, I think they're going to be okay, even though they got slightly covered in snow. I think it was warm enough to keep them above danger zone, uh, probably just marginally, but. Uh, yeah, you know, it's cold here today. It's cold here tonight. And it's going to be cold tomorrow. <laughs> but not cold cold. Not like winter cold. Uh, but a little more than your typical spring cold, especially in the middle of May. We're not quite in the middle yet, but we're getting pretty close there. Uh, so I think those will be all right. Um, I don't know if I mentioned this last week or not, but uh, yeah, I've got I've got quite a few sprouts coming up. You know, mostly the melons right now. Uh, I, haven't, I haven't seen too much of the other stuff coming up, but, uh, yeah, I definitely got uh, cantaloupes and honeydew melons springing up good time. And mostly mostly the uh, the honeydews are doing really well. So uh, I'm still, I, I think there's some watermelon going there, but I can't be positive on that one. Uh, those, those ones, they're, if they are, they're coming up a little slower. But as far as other things like tomatoes and... Uh, bell peppers and jalapenos and other such things like that. Yeah, they're not really there yet, but that's all right. I, I, I got time yet. I still got time, and I may go out and plant some new seeds there on those and see if we can get some of those things going. I, I, want, I want some peppers for sure, and I like tomatoes too, so yeah. Well, we're going to try it on those. We'll, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Let's see here what we got going on. Oh, by, by, by the way, uh, howdy to all the folks out there in the various places that I mentioned for the audio stream, whether it is realliberty.org or freedomsnetwork.com or Minds or Twitter or rlmradio.xyz. Um, uh, Woodman says here in the chat, the uh, IRC chat on Freenode, that uh, he failed. You haven't failed, man. You still got time. Get out out there and, and plant some new stuff. You got time to plant and still collect a nice crop, especially where you are, because you're going to have a longer growing season than I will up here in, in the in the high desert land. So you are down there in the low desert land. You should be all right. Um, 
can see, uh, Kate posted a link here about the uh, weather from uh, NWS Albuquerque. And apparently there were some record low high temps today. <laughs> record low highs. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Albuquerque 51, Klein's Corner, which is not far from E39. Las Vegas 40. That's Las Vegas, New Mexico, by the way. Yeah, then uh, Roswell is pretty good distance away, but uh, e either way, those are pretty uh, low highs on there for this this point in the year. Thanks for that, Kate. Anyway, hi and howdy to all the folks here in the chat on the Real Liberty Media chat on Freenode. We got we got the barman and Mr. Beetle, Cowboy Tech, and myself. The Moose Girl is still in the chat, even though she ain't here. We got Miss Kate in DC and Asmodeus. We got Chalcedonia and Echelon Free enslaved. Yes, indeed. Mr. I B. Don C. as well. Uh, the Java Doctor Ponder Gander. Now, earlier today, uh, Ponder Gander, a.k.a. Vin E., uh, did his show called Ponder Gander, uh, What Matters Worldwide. And I sat in there on the show with him, and we chatted back and forth on a few topics. So uh, if you're interested in that, the podcast is up there on reallibertymedia.com. Check it out. Yeah, maybe you'll figure something out. I, I don't know. I don't know if I learned anything, but it was interesting and fun to do. We got Rob Works and Rome's in uh, the Vanna White Bot. We got another Vinny here, a Vinny Speak. We got the Weather Dork Bot and Wood Man from down there in Arizona. We got Miss Z, yeah, Miss Z, the Phantom and the Well in the Circle. Go here with the circle. Circle. Uh, Frumpy and Gromit and uh, JJ's in uh, the Karl Marx Crazy Bot. We got Kiss in the Sock Puppet. And a fake Vanna White. A phony Vanna White. Hanging out there. <laughs> Man, I got a headache today. I don't know what's going on. I, I, just, I just pounded a few aspirin, so hopefully that'll fix that there. Uh, yeah. I get these sometimes from time to time these headaches. It's not like quite a migraine and it's not quite a sinus headache. It's somewhere in between. And I, I figure it's atmospheric. I know there's been some sun solar spot activity. So uh, probably from that. I, I drink uh, Free and Slave says hydrate. Uh, I, I drink more water I, I don't know 8, 12 bottles a day. I don't know. I just refill the bottles. I have a nice filtration system to, for my water so I just I just buy these bottles and I refill them until they until the bottles get too ugly and then I throw them out it's all in my mind thanks cowboy <laughs> so yeah I drink a lot of water I love my water it's good water and uh, you need water <laughs> right Let's see what else is going on that I can talk about here at the top of the show before I go into some music. Oh, yeah, not that this is going to matter to anybody outside of the crypto world, but for you crypto fans out there, <laughs> cryptocurrency fans, I should say, to be more clear, um, Bitcoin's been rising at a mild, moderate rate, slight rate. But due to that, a lot of the what are called altcoins or alternative to Bitcoin coins, crypto coins, uh, have been not doing so well. Uh, one of those, one of my favorite coins that I've had for the longest period of time, the dog coin, is, is down, what did I, I looked at it, 39 Satoshis right now, 38 Satoshis right now, um, and that's bad. I mean, it's bad for me. I don't know if it's bad for anybody else. But that's not as bad as my dope coin. My dope coin was sitting well up there this morning. Well, I don't know, well up there, but 130 Satoshis, 140, somewhere in that range. But then today, one of the major uh, exchanges that allows you to swap dope coin for Bitcoin and vice versa they uh, announced that Dopecoin was going to be delisted from their from their exchange. And so Dopecoin fell. And it fell hard. And it's sitting at 
39 Satoshis right now. So I, I you know, it, that, that, that one hurt. That one hurt a lot. Dopecoin was my big hope. I mean, at one point, Dopecoin was up to 4,000 Satoshis at one point. But it, you know, ranged around, you know, three, four, five, six hundred. Uh, but it's been riding a little bit lower as of late. And then today, with that announcement, it's it's really hurting. It's still out there. It's still on another exchange. But for whatever reason, uh, I guess with the, with the Bittrex announcement, announcement, ah, that that's painful. And uh, yeah, I see Bitcoin. Uh, Kate pulled it up there in the chat. Sixty-five hundred thirty-four dollars and the sixteen cents. Space Wolf, Howdy. <laughs> so, uh, like I said, that re doesn't really matter to anybody outside the crypto world. But if you like the cryptocurrencies, you're collecting the cryptocurrencies, you're trading them, whatever. Um, I, I was looking, hoping, you know, possibly a, a future form of income, but eh, I don't know. I don't know. I, I may have to look somewhere else for that because uh, this is not looking promising at this point in time. Uh, anyway, I'm going to just go ahead and start some music here, and then when we come back, I'll talk about some various uh, bizarre news stories or whatever that I've collected over the last period of time, however long that may be, and um, hopefully you'll enjoy these. With any luck, Eric Johnson from uh, Dallas International Guitar Festival. Yeah. Yeah. Coming to your town, we have your party it down. We're an American band. That's Rob Zombie there, covering that GFR. Uh, before that, we had Joe Bonamassa doing so it's like that at Guitar Center's King of Blues Finals. And we kicked it off with Eric Johnson, one of the G3. Yes, indeed, he was uh, doing Spanish Castle ma Magic, a uh, Jimi Hendrix tune there. Uh, just a uh, a couple weeks ago, uh, May May 4th, not even a couple weeks, last week, at the Dallas International Guitar Festival. Yep, rock and roll, let me tell you kids, like, let me tell you, rock and roll buddies. Oh, uh, yeah, I like that stuff. <laughs> I do, I do, I do, ain't no denying it. I am uh, definitely a, a rock and roller. Uh, as well as a bluesier, you know, uh, obviously. If you've listened to any of my shows, you've noticed some blues right there. You heard some Joe Bonamassa doing that. Yeah, yep, yep, yep. yep. So all, uh, all good, good, good stuff. If you like good music, that is. You have to like good music, I mean. Don't you? Imagine there's somebody out there that doesn't like good music, but I don't know who they are. I probably don't want to know those people. You know, if you, if you don't like good music, what, what's the what's the point? What's the point of your life? <laughs> oh man! <laughs> yeah, yeah. Anyway, <laughs> just having a good old time here. So, let's see, what do I got going on for the weekend? Anything big or important? No, I think I got I got a few more stumps I got to get out of the yard, which you know, who's that interested? Hey, stop that! Dang, video starting to play on its own. Probably all recognize that one. All right, um, but nothing too exciting. Uh, yeah, hopefully it's not too cold out there. I hate I hate being out there in the yard when it's too cold, but we'll see how it goes. You know. I don't know. I don't know. All right, let's go ahead and talk about this. Let's kick kick it off here, because um, you know why not? And uh, wh which one of these, which which version of this do I want to go with? I got I got a version on the Denver Post. Oh, I, I, these are uh, these are both Denver Post. Uh, hang on, it was the other one, right, 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 right here, on uh, Reason, Reason. So let's go with the Reason one. Um. And and they actually got it right over there on Reason. Uh, yeah, see, Woodman picked it right on up. All right. Um, <laughs> it's 
So here it is, Reason.com, on uh, yesterday. Yesterday? No, Wednesday. All right. Denver, the city of Denver, Colorado, just became the first U.S. city to decriminalize psychedelic mushrooms. The surprise results will embolden efforts by activists in other states to legalize psilocybin for medical and religious use. What about just, well, I, I guess you could call it religious, spiritual, um, or just a good old time, however you want to look at it. Uh, and, and having a good time, that should be a religious use, right? I, I mean, the church of, woohoo! <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> it is a, in a surprise turn of events, a Denver ballot initiative to effectively decriminalize psychedelic mushrooms, previously thought to have failed, now appears to have narrowly passed after all. This would make the Mile High City the first in the United States to decriminalize psilocybin. Uh, if the unofficial final tally holds, and I, I haven't heard today or I haven't looked today, I guess, uh, to see if it if it did hold, but I'm pretty sure it did or else I would have heard differently. Uh, Denver law enforcement, the jackbooted thugs of the state, will be directed to treat psychedelic mushrooms owned for personal possession as the lowest enforcement priority. The initiative will not legalize commercial sales. They'll just decriminalize. So that means, when, when they say decriminalize, that means, well, it's not a criminal thing. We're not going to throw you in jail for it. Unless, of course, however, we will, we will stop you. We will take your mushrooms from you. We will issue you a citation, which you have to pay a fine for. So you're losing out on the money you paid for the shrooms. You're losing out on whatever money they decide to steal from you. And then if you, somehow, decide at some point that hey I'm not gonna go and pay this ticket I'm I'm not I'm not going to court on this matter uh, then they'll come and kill you at that point well they won't come right away and kill you though they'll, they'll come and try and collect you and if you say no I don't want to be collected I, 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 I was just having some plant not even a plant a fungus growing out of the ground uh, then then that's when they will that, that's when they will kill you Anyway, <laughs> it says, we're sending a clear signal to the rest of the country. Kevin Matthews, the leader of Decriminalized Denver Movement, which placed an initiative on the ballot, told the Washington Post that America is ready to talk about psilocybin. Uh, we have work to do, and we're ready for it, and we could not be happier. Organizers collected more than 9,000 signatures to get decriminalization on the ballot, but even in Colorado, one of the state's first states to legalize, mean heavily tax and regulate, recreational marijuana, this was considered a long-shot test of how much appetite the public had for rolling back the drug war. The war on drugs? No, it's the war on you. They call it the war on drugs, but it's the war on the people. Media outlets... In, including Reason, initially reported that the initiative had failed as it was trailing by a significant margin on Tuesday night, but it closed the gap as the final votes rolled, rolled in today. As the Denver Post reports, after trailing in results postings Tuesday night and early Wednesday, final unofficial results just posted show a reversal of fortune with Initiative 301 set to pass with nearly 50.6% of the vote. Uh, this stands for, total stands for 89,320 votes in favor and 87,341 against a margin of merely 1,979. So Denver election, elections expect to continue accepting military and overseas ballots, but typically those numbers are small. As Reasons Jacob Solom wrote yesterday, the measure appeared to have failed. The, ch the change's real-world impact would be modest. Denver has only a prosecuted a handful of psilocybin uh,
cases over the past few years, but in a state where legalized marijuana for recreational use seven years ago, the psilocybin initiative was a test of whether the victory reflected widespread acceptance of a moral principle that could be extended to other drugs. Uh, not that marijuana is a drug, not that psilocybin is a drug, but they're calling them drugs here for the purposes of this article. It would have been the first time in any U.S. jurisdiction that has decided that using psilocybin mushrooms should not be treated as a crime. Activists are working on state initiatives that would decriminalize psilocybin for medical and religious use in California and legalize medical use in Oregon. Now, I don't know why they bother with all this little bullshit, you know, decriminalize here, legalize for certain purposes there, or whatever. Just, just let people use it. Just get off people's backs. It's none of your business what people do. Seriously, it's not. And uh, so, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, hooray for psilocybin. We love the mushrooms. I, I wish they would have gone ahead and done it with LSD. But, uh, you know, we'll, we'll have to see how that goes in the future. Maybe they'll, maybe they'll change their mind on that one in the future. Um, or, you know, they, they're doing piecework, one, one thing at a time. So, yeah, shrooms are great, man. Just a good time. I, I don't know how anybody can have anything against them. I, I certainly do not, um, obviously. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> All right, let's see. What, what else What else we got that, uh, on that thing here? Oh, I just want to talk about this. And I know I've talked about it before, but I, I have to talk about it again uh, because this is, uh, to me, I think to me one of the most important, but not not really, to me one of the most important, but in the world today, in the direction things are going, and the way people are freaking out over nothing, this makes a lot of sense, and it's very important. And, and, and it comes from a site called hemp.com, and it's about hemp plastics. And this article's not new. I don't know exactly know when this came out, but a couple of years at least, I think this article was. Uh, anyway, hemp plastics. Henry Ford used hemp and sisal cellulose plastic to build car doors and fenders in 1941. On video, Henry Ford demonstrated that his hemp cars were more resistant to blows from a sledgehammer than steel-bodied cars were. Clearly, hemp plastic and composites are not a new technology. But with today's science and know-how, the future of hemp plastic has never looked more promising. The basing, basic building block of plastics is cellulose taken from petroleum. But toxic petrochemical compositions are not the only way to derive plastics. Plastics can be derived from plant cellulose and since hemp is the greatest cellulose producer on earth, hemp herds can be 85% cellulose, it only makes sense to make a non-toxic biodegradable plastic from hemp and other organics instead of letting our dumps and oceans fill up with refuse. Hemp herds can also be processed in the cellophane packaging material, which was common until the 1930s, or they, they may be manufactured in the low-cost composite re replacement for styrofoam. Hang on a second, I need a sip here. Now, as you probably all are well aware of and realize, in various cities around the United States and probably other places, they are banning plastic. They just say they're banning plastic. They don't want plastic straws. They don't want plastic bags. They don't want the, the, the plastic things that go around your six-pack or whatever. Uh, and they don't want the styrofoam. A lot, a lot of places now are trying to ban the styrofoam that a lot of places use to put your, like, food stuff in. Like, uh, I, I don't know where. But a lot of places use the styrofoam for, for uh, putting food things in. 
and it, it's very cheap, it's disposable, and da da da. But the styrofoam they're using is also a petroleum based styrofoam. So when these cities go ahead and they ban plastics, they're not only banning the petroleum based plastics, they're also banning any other form of plastic because they most of them don't realize or don't care that there is a better alternative that costs probably less to manufacture in, in quantities as, as as the petroleum base does and that it is perfectly environmentally safe for people to use so when you hear them saying uh, that they're banning plastics just understand that they they, they are putting things they're banning things that they should not be banning anyway I'll let you I'll, I'll let you read the rest of this article like I said I I've talked about the the hemp plastics before um, uh, but it, it came up in my brain again uh, over this this recent times because of what they're doing and I I've also talked about uh, other companies that are using the uh, petroleum-based plastics to make new products out of and and, and uh, free and slave just posted some links about that here in the chat now so if you're not over here in the chat by the way come on over jump on in um, and <laughs> you can get all this other information so uh, it, it, to, to me it's just such such common sense and and I that, that they would start using a hemp for this purpose and in December last December uh, hemp was made to be not illegal anymore on a national scale. Now, of course, it still has to be made not illegal on a state scale, uh, and states are, you know, dumb and they slow. And anyway, so uh, for anybody out there that that says, "Oh, plastic, plastic is terrible," petroleum-based plastic is terrible. Petroleum-based. You can make plastic out of other things. Hemp is your best option because there, I, I just told you, the uh, the greatest cellulose producer on earth. Yeah. Now, of course, uh, free and, free and enslaved said hemp legal. Cool. He didn't know that. However, um, and, and although I doubt that he had anything to do with it, Trump tried to claim that as a victory of his, like he did it which I don't think he probably even knew about it until the bill came across his desk. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it's huge. It's huge. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> oh, oh, here's the one that I, that I think brought, brought it up, the thing that I had to talk about this from. Uh, Maine, in Maine, the, the state of Maine out there on the East Coast. Maine becomes the first state to ban polystyrene foam can, food containers, uh, which is what I was saying. Well, that's one of the things you can not use polystyrene to make these out of. You can use hemp. Uh, but Maine uh, has become the first state to implement an outright ban on poly, polystyrene, widely known as styrofoam food containers, which are one of the Ten most littered items in the U.S. Uh, Governor Janet Mills signed a bill Tuesday that bars polystyrene and it will take take effect next January 1st. Uh, this article was from May 1st here. Anyway, polystyrene cannot be recycled like a lot of other products. So while that cup of coffee may be finished, the styrofoam cup it was in is not right. So um, somebody needs to talk to this woman, uh, Janet Mills. Is that her name, Janet? Did I say Janet? Yeah, Janet Mills. Um, and tell her that, you doofus, <laughs> have your people switch to hemp-based products. Uh, <laughs> and then, then things will be better. So um, anyway, it says Maine is now leading the nation with lunacy. I mean, uh dealing with polystyrene pollution. Uh, polystyrene is harmful to humans. I, I don't know if that's true. It puts a strain on our fish stocks. Eh, maybe. 
and it cannot be recycled. Well, right, that that stuff can't. Um, thankfully, there are main made alternatives ready to be used. So other and she probably got a little kickback, you know, for doing that that thing there. Anyway, other municipalities around the country have banned other containers harmful to the environment, including New York City, where the idiots there prohibited the the city from buying single-use plastic containers. And again, they don't specify uh, anything on the plastic, other than the fact that it's plastic. So, uh, yeah. Somebody may need to talk to that woman and tell her that the, the alternatives that you have may not be the best alternatives. What you want to use is hemp. And you want to use hemp for pretty much everything. I mean, you can use it for fuel. You can use it for building cars out of. You can use it for the straws and the bags and the computer cases and well, whatever, man. You can use it for everything. These water bottles, uh, they can all be made out of hemp. Just saying, just saying. <laughs> For those of you interested, <laughs> yeah. Oh, man, let's say some more tunes here. Uh, i tell you, man, it's a crazy world. It's a crazy world. So, all right, this is uh, Paul Rogers and the boys. <laughs> Winona, she sure did have a pretty big brown beaver. <laughs> That's Primus there. Yeah, good old stuff. That's kind of a freakish ball classic there. Winona's big brown beaver. And before that, we had a Rush doing Limelight. That was originally a Woodman request, but it was re-requested by me. And we kicked it off with Paul Rogers doing Bad Company. Uh, Slash was sitting in on that video. Slash, yeah. Uh, back in 1994 at Woodstock 94. Yeah, good stuff. Good stuff. Rock and roll, Betty. <laughs> uh, any uh, y'all out there like that rock and roll stuff? Hey, uh, fans of the rock and roll, I hope y'all are. Fans of the blues, come on back on Sunday morning at uh, noon Eastern. For some blues, yeah, you'll get a lot of blues on Sunday morning, Sunday from, uh, well, from 10 to 1 in my time, but uh, East Coast would be a noon to 3, uh, immediately followed, of course, by Hal Anthony doing his Behind the Woodshed gig that he does and teaches people all kinds of inter interesting information about how to deal with the stadies, and there are a lot of stadies, believe you me, man. I don't know why, but they uh, they just, they are. Uh, they're out there. They're all over the place. I'd like to get rid of them. Do you know how to get rid of them? I haven't figured out how to get rid of them all yet. All them stadiums. Why, why is this tab, this one particular tab, starts playing stuff immediately? I, I don't quite get it. All right. <laughs> so if anybody has a clue how to get rid of all the status, I'd like that information. Pass it along, please, if you will. <laughs> all right, all right, all right, all right. Okay. Now, some of y'all out there, some, some, some of y'all out there probably use certain Microsoft products like Microsoft Office, uh, specifically probably because whatever company you work for that's what they use, and that's what they want you to use, and you need to be good at the Microsoft Office products to work at that particular company. I don't like them. I, I use other ones. I use LibreOffice. I use OpenOffice, and and I use uh, another one. But those are those are primarily the ones, and they're basically the same thing based on the same thing. And, and those are those are open source versions of Office applications in which you can use and save your documents in, in in Microsoft Office format. But if you're still using Microsoft Word, uh, I have some news for you here from Summit News, which was posted uh, yesterday. 
Microsoft to release a version of Word, Microsoft Word, that makes your grammar politically correct. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> New features will screen out, quote, offensive, unquote, language. Thanks for that link. Uh, free. So I posted a link on how to be mean to status to, uh, from Larkin Rose there. Yeah. All right. Anyway, uh, Microsoft is set to release a new version of Word that uses artificial intelligence to make your writing politically correct. You know how annoying it is when the iPhone corrects fucking to ducking every time you type out the word? Imagine that for an entire essay. The new feature called Ideas in Word will recommend, presently recommend, or in the future probably force, sensitive phrases like, we need to get some fresh blood in here, to be modified so that fresh blood becomes new employees. It might underline places where your writing exhibited gender bias. Phrases... <laughs> Gender bias, uh, reports Fast Company. If you tend to say mailman or congressman in the generic, it might suggest you use male person or congressperson. Well, why is it male person? Maybe it should be female person. <laughs> if you use the term gentleman's agreement, it might suggest you use unspoken agreement instead. Uh, the term disabled person would be replaced with person with disability, while the new version's inclusiveness check searches for words and phrases that might possibly be offensive to someone from another country or culture. I, I, I don't get it. I don't get how these are being offensive to anybody, but whatever. Mark Sullivan, who's a fan of the new features, <laughs> idiot, says he is worried about unknowingly or accidentally inserting terms or references in my writing that convey value judgments that I don't really mean. Well, you freaking puss, just write, write what you mean then. And he wants to avoid writing something that might offend some poor person. Rumor has it that every new purchase of Word will come with a voucher for a yearly supply of soy lattes from Starbucks. <laughs> so all the soy boys <laughs> can be politically correct. Uh, free and slave says male creature or Congress creature. Oh God! All right, that there again from Summit News. dot com. <laughs> Just replace everything with fucking status. Yeah, I, I agree, Rob. That that would work. And they got a video here that I'm not really sure what it's about, but apparently there's this clown meme going around. It's a rainbow flag on the on the what, what do you call it? Maga frog. And apparently that's upsetting some people. I I don't really understand why, but yeah, yeah. But that's Microsoft didn't do everything bad this week. They did actually do one thing that looks to be like a good thing. The jury is still out. I haven't tried it yet. Um, and and again, you probably don't actually need it to do honkler. Yeah, it's, it's got something to do with honking. I, I don't know. But uh, honkler says translate. All right. So Microsoft also this week released a whole host of various open source pro projects, I guess. Uh, one of them, uh, Microsoft launches Visual Studio Online, an online code editor. Free. Free to use. Uh, Microsoft today, what day was this on? Uh, the five days ago. All right. Uh, today announced a private preview launch of the Visual Studio Online, an online code editor the company is positioning as a companion to Visual Studio and Visual Studio Code. The service, based on Visual Studio Code, 
Microsoft's popular free and open source desktop code editor. This means, which it's a pig, by the way, if you've downloaded Visual Studio Code and installed it on, on one of your machines, oh, the thing is a freaking monster. Um, but it works. You know, it does work, and you can code in it, and it's free. So, anyway, this means Visual Studio Online will also support all the extensions that are currently available for Visual Studio Code, as well as the popular features like Visual Studio Code workspaces. Support for IntelliCode, Microsoft's tool for AI-assisted uh, AI development, which is, I got to say, really cool. I, I mean, I hate to give Microsoft any props at all at any time for anything, but yeah, no, that's really cool. <laughs> anyway, so Microsoft's tool for AI-assisted development that became generally available today is also built in. The emphasis here is on Visual Studio Online becoming a companion. It's not meant to become your de your default development environment, and for good reason, but uh, I'll leave that to your own experience as you go forward. Uh, so it's a good way, as they say here, to make a quick edit or uh, review a pull request or join a live share session or whatever. Uh, and if you think the name Visual Studio Online sounds familiar, it is, because Microsoft is actually recycling the name. Um, not that long ago, Visual Studio Online was Microsoft's hub for all things DevOps. Uh, before DevOps, it was a, was a buzzword. Last year, the company renamed its Azure DevOps, which I am no fan of Azure. And if you're not a person that does any development, you probably are unaware of what this whole Azure thing is, but I don't like it. Anyway, leaving the name open for other uses. Frankly, given the name, a lot of people probably always assumed that Visual Studio Online was, indeed, a web-based version of the integrated development environment. Yeah, but it wasn't. It's worth, but, but now this new thing is. Um... It's worth noting that if you don't want to wait for Microsoft to open the private preview to more users, there are also startups like Coder. And I am going to recommend Coder to you. And, and you can go to coder.com and, and find that. Uh, that also provides you with a Visual Studio Code environment. Uh, so you you may, may well uh, want to check out the coder.com situation because it's neat it's cool and if you if you ever maybe just you know test your test your toes in the water and see if you want to check out doing maybe some possible coding for one thing or another and and you can code for uh, various formats here uh, in, including your 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 uh, mobile devices so uh might I lose everybody? <laughs> People are probably saying, that's all this coding nonsense. I don't want to hear this geek talk. <laughs> uh, Free Enslaved Honkler is the newest Pepe the Frog that is being said to be a white supremacist frog or something. Yeah, frogs aren't really known for their giving a crap what color your skin is. <laughs> Oh, God. <laughs> all right, all right. Um, this was a thing last week, and uh, I think Cowboy Ten Tech mentioned it at, like, the end of the show or after the end of the Freakers Ball show last week. Uh, it's all been resolved now, but uh, I might as well t tell anybody in case they had a problem and, 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 and didn't understand what the hell was going on. Um, and at this point in time... Well, anyway, here it is. Firefox fixes borked extensions for everyone but legacy users. I, I was interested in seeing this title because I didn't know that people outside of Real Liberty Media were using the term borked uh, as for something that was totally screwed up. <laughs> Apparently, borked is out there in the mainstream. Um, so, uh, whatever. Firefox fixes borked extensions for everyone except for the legacy users. Uh, so if you have a Firefox, use a Firefox browser, uh, and you go into your add-on section, you will notice there's a, a section there uh, for legacy extensions, which are no longer installable using Firefox. However, 
If you use Waterfox, you can still install and use those old plugins if you can find them, if you still have them. Uh, and if, if you have them still listed as legacy extensions in your Firefox, you can copy them uh, to, to your Waterfox install uh, and, and they'll work just fine there. Um, anyway, so if your Firefox add-ons were borked over last weekend, you're not alone. Late on Friday, many Firefox users found that many extensions were suddenly useless or impossible to install after Mozilla pushed out an update to version 66.04 of its browser. Effectively, it left many users, most users, almost everybody, having to figure out on their own workaround uh, to, to use their ad blockers, password managers, and many other types of extensions. I had a long list of them. Mine didn't pop up until Saturday morning after I restarted my browser, uh, but uh, Cowboy Tech apparently had that problem last Friday night. Uh, I said it was either at the end of the Freakers Ball or at, just after the end of the Freakers Ball. I don't know, but my, I looked at mine at that point and everything was fine until I restarted the damn Firefox. Anyway, so after furiously scrambling for a few days, Mozilla has some good news and some bad news. The good... It released a fix that restored extensions for the majority of users on Firefox 66. As of this writing, Mozilla said it had been uh, said it's been rolled out for both desktop and Android, as well as ESR, which is the long-term extended service. Whatever those are older versions of Firefox that that you can use uh, that will not prevent you from it. If you ever need an ESR use uh, for anything, then then you can use that. Uh, but I prefer uh, I prefer Waterfox as it's not stuck on the old functionality uh, of the old uh, version 60 Firefox. Anyway, it also tweeted that the fix will be automatically applied and users don't act actually have to do anything. I did have to do some. I, I did have to run an update in order to get the, that fix put in, but uh, maybe I was just jumping the gun a little bit. I, I'm not sure. Uh, either way, uh, Firefox is basically back to where it was earlier in the day last Friday uh, than to uh, how it wound up late Friday night uh, a week, last week. So, yeah, there's that. Um, Hansel! He, Hansel knows Honkler? Yeah. All right. All right. <laughs> no comments. <laughs> oh, where did that go? I just saw that. Okay, oh, that was the reason. The re the reason they were being um the reason they, they they were all expired. I don't really have to go through this all this with you. Uh but basically, and this thing this kind of confused me a little bit as to what what why I mean it's their own thing. But this is the reason that the add-ons were being disabled was due to what they call an expired certificate. It's their certificate. Um, the, the Firefox's own certificate. But uh, according to this, uh, that people were discovering that all of their add-ons were suddenly disabled. Turns out this is being caused by an expired intermediary certificate used to sign Mozilla's add-ons. So for what it's worth, it doesn't matter now. Um, but but there it is for you. So, hooray. <laughs> oh, God. What is this guy? What was this guy talking about? All right, we'll cover this. Um, because this was... It's stupid. It's ridiculous. But, but here it is. Um, and, 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 again, it's just like... How... How uh, can can they come up with 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 a with a comment like that? Why why is this not copying? Oh 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 oh! Never mind. Hang, hang on a second. All right. It, so sometimes things confuse me. <laughs> it was my comment. Uh, yeah, they weren't really out for four days, but close enough. Uh, cl cl close enough. Um, 
<laughs> so, anyway, uh, the EPA, the Environmental Protection Agency, says that popular weed killer glyphosate is not a carcinogen. Yeah, right. But then again, of course, Monsanto runs the EPA, so what you gonna do? What you gonna say? <laughs> if the EPA disagrees with you, that doesn't mean you should believe in conspiracy theories. <laughs> After the anti-GMO movement crashed and burned in the last few years, no it didn't. No, it didn't. Um, after the activists lost every argument with people who knew what they were talking about, no, they didn't. They absolutely did not lose their arguments. They shifted their target to the associated herbicide. It is ridiculous on the face to believe that GMOs cause every ill illness ever. Okay, not every illness ever, but it's a little more plausible to believe that glyphosate causes cancer. The empirical problem with that thinking is the same. The scientific studies, of course, they're not really scientific studies. They're industry studies, which are not really studies at all, but uh, a pile of manipulated data uh, that draw such conclusions are not repeated. Recent meta-analysis found that the associations between glyphosate and cancer were weak. Another totally lie incorrect statement the anti-glyphosate activism is driven by pre-existing dogma not by science the EPA is out of its freaking mind and just flat out lying to you because as I said in the beginning that the EPA is run by Monsanto so what kind of answer did you expect if that was not it. Uh, so, um, basically, screw the EPA. Screw Monsanto. They're lying to you. They don't care if they kill you as long as they can keep their profits rolling in. Ah. <laughs> yeah. I already did that one. I'm, I'm marking. All right. Um, Let's see here. Okay, we'll just share this one. I talked about crypto a little earlier, but we didn't get to this one. And and it's not exactly, the headline is not exactly accurate, but it's still something that you may want to consider next year if you're a tax slave, if you're one of the people that has money stolen out of your paycheck every week or however often or if you're a business owner that's got to pay uh, that, that's got to, to pay taxes quarterly or however often um, if if, they're ste if the government's stealing money from you this is, this is an option or could be an option U.S. income tax payers or victims I should say victims can now get refunds a, a little bit portion of the money stolen from you back in Bitcoin. Income tax payers in the U.S. now have the option to receive their federal and state refunds in Bitcoin. Blockchain payments pro processor BitPay, which I kind of would say avoid BitPay if you can, but BitPay announced uh, the news on Tuesday saying that the firm has partnered with the U.S. taxation services Provider, provider Refundo, <laughs> which sounds like a fake name. Hey, I'm going to Refundo. <laughs> refundo. <laughs> sounds like a clown thing. Um, so, Refundo customers can choose to receive all or a portion of their tax refund in, a bit, in Bitcoin using its CoinRT product. Taxpayers will have to set up an account to get a unique routing and account number to input on their tax return according to the announcement. And then it also costs you 35 bucks to do it. So eh, just get your refund in, in, the, in the Federal Reserve debt notes 
and, and then if you want Bitcoin from that, then go ahead and do it that way. Because, I mean, yay, hooray, you could get your refund in a Bitcoin if you use this specific service in this specific way and give them all your private information and then give them $35. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm going to skip on that one. But uh, it's out there for you, hey, for anybody that's really interested. It's out there, and uh, so, uh, yeah, enjoy, enjoy all that. Right, so, um, anyway, we're going to do some more music right here, and we're going to kick it off with um, Brian Setzer and Jeff Beck together, playing together. Well, whoop. there's going to be a freak as Whoop, whoop. <laughs> I gotta rename that thing so I quit switching to it by accident. <laughs> All right, here you go. Amazing performance. Uh, the incredible Miss Beth Hart there with the amazing Gary Hilly doing I'd Rather Go Blind. Oh, boy, that, that's, a, that's a performance. That's that's top-notch stuff. Uh, anyway, before that, we had Ingwie uh, fucking Malmsteen. Uh, you know, I thought for a long time, for many years, and I may have mentioned this before here on, uh, on, on this show or on other shows, I, I don't know, that uh, I thought for a long time that Ingwie's middle name was fucking Angwy fucking Malmsteen. <laughs> but apparently it's a J something. I don't know what it is. Uh, Angwy J Malmsteen. <laughs> anyway, that was called Peace, Please, off of his uh, new album, Blue Lightning, that you may want to check out there. Uh, if you like, If you like excellent guitar playing, uh, then you're going to like anything done by Ingwie. And we kicked it off with Brian Setzer and uh, Jeff Beck doing 20 Flight Rock. Yep, 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 yeah. So, uh, Vin E is mentioning there in the chat that Bradley slash Chelsea uh, Manning ha was released from uh, detention, from, from jail, from kidnapping, from lockup. Uh, today, um, be because of the fact that... Uh, he was not. He was not going to testify on the WikiLeaks situation. However, um, oh, look at that. Uh, how, however, um, <laughs> don't mind me. I, I get distracted. Uh, the grand jury that he was in contempt of, apparently, for refusing to testify against WikiLeaks or about WikiLeaks, whether whether against or not, um, they disbanded. They, their, their, their job was finished. So if the grand jury that held him in contempt is no longer there to say you're being in contempt, um, then he's no longer in contempt. He's free to go. So, <laughs> yeah, more, more of that front hole stuff. Oh, man. <laughs> You guys, you guys. <laughs> all right, all right, that's good. We'll do that one. All right, that's fine. That'll work out just fine. Okay. <laughs> Let's see what's going on over here in the chat, because I can't see it. I got too many things open. I need another monitor or two. Yeah. I'll, I've only got two monitors on this computer. So another monitor could come in pretty handy. Uh, he is not a she. He must have got seriously mind fucked by the spooks. Mind and ass, no doubt. Sick fucks. Okay. That's according to Vin E. <laughs> right there on that. Oh boy, I tell ya. So since we're talking about weird weirdos and weirdnesses and other such weird things. Let's go to this weirdness right here, right now. From humansarefree.com. 
The UN is normalizing pedophilia. The deep state is free to prey upon your children. Now, this article posted... Uh, da, 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 da. Is there a date on here? I don't see a date on here. All right. Um, but it's posted under the head, heading, Recent Articles and Satanist Pedophiles. Okay. <laughs> The United Nation Office of the High Commissioner for Human Rights is sanctioning a sexual revolution that will culminate in the legalization of wholehearted support of transgenderism, but will also support the legalization of pedophilia. Pedophilia. As the deep state is further exposed for their role in pedogate, we can expect more counterattacks since, or such as, the legalization of pedophilia. What's going on there? Oh, okay. And I got a picture here of a little crying girl. The United Nations Human Rights Council, <laughs> very loose based term there, which counts some of the world's most ruthless dictators as members, sparked global outrage last week by voting to appoint a UN czar to, the, to oversee the normalization of homosexuality and transgenderism around the world. According to the UN's propaganda service, I thought the whole UN was a propaganda service. Anyway, uh, the discredited UN Human Rights Council debated, uh, by the way, if you're unfamiliar with the way these, these agencies work, whenever they use a term, what they mean is the opposite. So if it says Human Rights Council, that means violation of Human Rights Council. Anyway, the Human Rights Council debated the measure for almost four hours on June 30th before adopting the scheme in a contentious vote. Just 23 members, member governments, and regimes voted in favor of creating the new czar, while 18 voted against and six abstained. So 23 voted for it, and 18 voted against it. The measure was pushed forward by a tight-knit network of communist and socialist governments in Latin America with close ties to Marxist terrorist groups, Western globalists, Moscow, and Beijing. A number of European governments and other members of the LGBT core, core group which includes Obama and the EU, also played a key role in pushing the scheme from outside the UN human rights outfit. For the first time, work on this issue, normalizing homosexuality and transgenderism, will be effectively institutionalized at the Human Rights Council, the UN said. Celebrated as a great step forward, for human rights in the U.S. forward, yeah. Uh, the measures he advocated here, including new laws to protect people from discrimination, are the same measures that, today, we advocate to governments everywhere. Ironically, uh, the praise for the child rapist came as even as the U.N.'s peace armies were facing global outrage for systemically raping and sexually exploiting children around the world. Years ago, this guy wrote about the fact that the North American Man-Boy Love Association, NAMBLA, was advocating for the legalization of pedophilia. Their identifying banner statement is, Sex before eight, or it's too late. Let that sink into your brain there. Sex before eight or it's too late. This is apparently what they believe. Care to guess the largest contributor is? NAMBLA is the largest contributor to George Soros. Oh, oh, no, NAMBLA is not the biggest contributor to George Soros. George Soros is the biggest contributor to NAMBLA. <sighs> it says here, NAMBLA's largest contributor is George Soros. The Libertarian Party supports an age of consent reform. 
which what's wrong with that? I don't know, but they're somehow conflating NAMBLA with the Libertarian Party. I, I don't get that. Uh, anyway, whatever. Uh, the following is an example of how academics talk about pedophilia. Soon the practice, much like transgenders terrorizing girls in female restrooms, has become the norm. Pedophilic interest is natural and normal for human males, said the presentation. At least a sizable minority of normal males would like to have sex with children. Normal males? Normal males? So if this isn't you, you're not a normal male. Normal males are aroused by children. So if you're not aroused by children, according to these people, you're not a normal male. Some yellowing track from the 70s or early 80s era of abuse of celebrities in the infamous pie, the pedophilia information exchange. No. Anonymous commenters on some underground website. No. The statement that pedophilia is natural and normal was not made three, dec three decades ago, but last July. It was made not in private, but as one of the central claims of the academic presentation delivered at the invitation of organizers to many of the key experts in the field at a conference held at the University of Cambridge. Other presenters, including Liberating the Pedophile, a discursive analysis, and Danger and Difference, the Stakes of Hebophilia, Heba, H-E-B-E, philia. Hebophilia is apparently the sexual preference for children in early puberty, typically 11 to 14 year olds. So uh, apparently they're separating pedophiles from the hebophiles. The most heinous organization in America is NAMBLA. Uh, yeah, using that banner statement, sex before eight or it's too late. Uh, we are on our way in the country to allowing and even encouraging sex with children. The last taboo is being eliminated. It's now tolerated that creatures with an XY chromosome structure can enter little girls' restrooms under the guise of being a transgender and terrorize these girls, George Soros style. Your children are about to become a, a part of a world that they are not equipped to live in. How long will it be until employees who have sex with children is protected as well as when we look at the transgender issue in the bathrooms? No, this is not hyperbole. It is a legitimate concern. The NAMBLA uh, be, uh, begins to figure prominently into this picture in the past, their trademark phrases was sex before eight, it's too late, or it's too late. It's an obvious attempt to remove the last perverted prohibition from our legal code as well as our societal safeguards to protect children. Words cannot describe how sick and perverted these people truly are. Uh, this, is, this is the direction, yeah. This is, this is where they want to go. And, of course, yeah, are you surprised that George Soros is leading the charge on something such as that? I'm betting you're not. I'm betting you're not. Absolute insanity. But there it is for you, so... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, man. <laughs> oh, I should have talked about this one earlier when I was talking about the Roundup deal, but but uh, that's all right. We'll just give you a little bit because we've already talked about the whole Roundup thing. Um, okay, somebody, hang on a second here. Somebody posted a leak here. Let me see who did it. Uh, Hansel, okay. Uh, says he posted a link from Daily Mail. Transgender people in China are classified as mentally ill, driven to perform self-surgery. Ow! 
I don't know about that. All right, so from Courthouse News Service, um, expert, human body good at repelling and expelling Roundup. No, it's not. No, it absolutely is not. So anyway, an industrial hygienist hired by, hired by Monsanto faced off Tuesday against the lead attorney for a couple claiming decades of Roundup uh, use contributed significantly to them both developing non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. Uh, Dr. Robert Phelan, a specialist in various environmental hazards and pollutants, told jurors that glyphosate, the main chemical compound in Roundup, is not readily absorbed into the skin. He's a liar. He's lying. He's paid to lie. That's what he does. He explained that glyphosate is hydrophilic or attracted to water, to which the skin acts as an exceptional barrier. I, I, yeah, I, like I said, we, we've talked all about this crap, and, uh, you know, to hell with it. To hell, to hell with that shit. Uh, but there it is for you. I, I, I just, you know, <laughs> I, don't, I, I don't even know how they get away with uh, saying that kind of stuff. And... and <sighs> All right. Well, if you're one of these people, and you may well be one of these people, you're in danger, but you're not allowed to know that you're in danger. This article from The Mind Unleashed here on May 8th, so a couple days ago, uh, states, new data reveals... 19 million people in 43 states are exposed to toxic chemicals in drinking water. Now, this may be poisoning the minds of a lot of folks, making them think that things like this pedophilia is just a fine, good thing for anybody that wants to go out and screw little children. Ugh. I'm not saying it is. I'm just saying that it's a possibility. Of course, with the, everything else that you get poisoned with, the fluorides of the vaccines and the uh, various chemicals that they pump into your food and, the, and the, on and on. Anyway, so while those cities who lead, uh, while, excuse me, while those who lead our cities, towns, and public utilities uh, companies continually reassure us that they're doing us a service, and require payment to continue doing so, it's glaringly obvious that most Americans are getting a poor return on their investment. And not like it's a, a voluntary investment. No, it's stolen from you. So uh, calling it an investment might be a little um, generous. A new report by the Environmental Working Group in Northeastern University has found that people in 43 states within the United States have access to unhealthy drinking water contaminated with PFAS chemicals. According to the CDC, those very same chemicals have been linked to major health issues like birth defects, cancer, and infertility. PFAS compounds are a family of thousands of chemicals used in a wide array of consumer and industrial applications that most of us have right here in our homes right now. Cleaning products, waterproof clothing, non-stick cookware, textiles, grease-resistant food packaging, leather, paper goods, leather, really? Paper goods, paint, and more. One of the most notorious PAFS chemicals compounds is PFOA, which was previously used to make DuPont Teflon. So all them nice Teflon cookie pans you got, yeah, you could be having this poison right there. Uh, using information compiled from the Pentagon and water utility reports, the researchers have shown that around 19 million people are currently being exposed to contaminated water, with contamination sites ranging from the entire public water systems to military bases, airports, industrial plants, garbage dumps, and firefighter training sites. The Environmental Working Group uh, said in a statement on Monday, the known extent of contamination of American communities with the highly toxic, to highly toxic fluorinated compounds known as PAF, PFAS 
continue to grow at an alarming rate with no end in sight. This should be frightening to all Americans in many ways, said David Andrews, a scientist with the EWG. These chemicals don't break down in our body, and they don't break down in the environment. They actually stick, out, uh, stick to our blood, so levels tend to increase over time. These chemicals can impact a lot of different health systems, cause numerous health problems, uh, everything from testicular to kidney cancer, heart and liver, heart to, to thyroid. Uh, the, the Environmental Working Group has an uh, interactive map here, so you can see how highly affected you are uh, by, by these chemicals. I checked, and, and there's no dot near my area. But, uh, I'm, I, again, I am not in a metropolitan area, so uh, if you live in and or near a big city, uh, you probably want to take a, take a glance at that, at that map uh, down there towards the bottom of the post and uh, see what's affecting you. Again, uh, if you have, especially for drinking water in your home, use a filter. Use a good filter. Uh, use, use a Berkey or, or use a Crystal Quest or use something else. I'm not, I'm not, uh, I'm not uh, pimping anybody's product here. I personally use the Crystal Quest. That's just a, a matter of choice. I didn't want the big slow burn Berkey, although a lot of people use them and really love them, and they are very good. Um, so yeah, use whatever you want. There's more out there. There's more brands out there uh, that will do a fine job for you in getting rid of all of these nasty these things. So, um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, woohoo! Bitcoin up seven percent in twenty-four hours. It's not helping me out though, because uh, my 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 cryptos are oh are in pain. My cryptos are are in pain. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> uh. All right, now, they're calling this, and I assume they're calling this this for a per, per, for a specific reason, but it's not there in the headline, so that maybe uh, if you only read headlines, you won't go any further. But if you read more than headlines, it's possible you will. So here it is. Mysterious data breach. Mysterious. Personal info on more than 80 million households exposed. Um, da -da 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 -da. San Jose, California. In a data breach that could impact hundreds of millions of U.S. citizens, security researchers have uncovered a mysterious database with personal information of around 80 million American households lying exposed on a Microsoft cloud server. The discovery was reported Monday uh, by Ran Lokar and Noam Rotem, Security researchers in the VPN Mentor, a website that reviews VPN services and web privacy tools. The 24 gigabyte database includes full names, home addresses, latitude and longitude, age, date of birth, gender, marital status, income, homeowner status, and dwelling type. While data breaches are growing increasingly common these days, this discovery is particularly unusual as nobody knows who the data belongs to. All the data entries are of users aged 40 and over. So, people like me, old folk. The data could be used to, for identity theft, phishing, ransomware attacks, uh, the data presents real-world dangers as well, as attackers could pull up social media profiles of the users to figure out when or if they're away from home. The thief not only knows where you live, they also know that you're far away from home, so the house is probably empty. They can also see your income, so they can approximate the value of your home contents. You just became the prime target for attack. The researchers say the database likely belongs to some kind of service, like an insurance, healthcare, or mortgage company. VPN Mentor is calling on the public 
to help identify the database and close the leak. Uh, the data's gone. That, that data's out there, which they say is a gold mine for identity thieves and other attackers. So, uh, yeah. Ain't that just peachy? <laughs> Oh, God. <laughs> yeah, that's a never-ending supply of these things. Um, <laughs> so whatever. Let's play some more music. <laughs> I don't know. I, I, get, I get too deep into these things that I just... Oh, what the hell's going on, man? <laughs> yeah. All right. So let's do let's let's let let's do some more jams here for you all on the Freakers Ball. This is from the Keeping the Blues Alive Cruise in 2019. Joe Bonamassa, Eric Gales, and King Solomon Hicks uh, doing a song called "I Get Evil," and apparently, all these people I've been talking about, they are evil. Oh, yeah, Mama, she got herself a nice little squeeze box going on there. <laughs> That's the who. The squeeze box from uh, Retro TV Central on the YouTube. Uh, before that, uh, we had uh, Jeff Beck and uh, ZZ Top doing Ernie Ford 16 tons, originally requested by myself and re-requested by Miss Kate. Now, I don't know how long ago I requested that, but it's been quite a while. Anyway, we kicked it off with Joe Bonamassa, Eric Gales, King Solomon Hicks, doing I Get Evil on the Keeping the Blues Alive Cruise 2019. So, uh, yeah, yeah, it's uh, some fighty mine, fighty mine, mighty fine stuff. Oops, what did I do there? i got to undo whatever I did. I, I didn't mean to do whatever I did, and uh, that did not work out properly. <laughs> you know, you know the control C, control V things that you use for copy and, and paste. Yeah, sometimes I, I I mix them up and I get them backwards, and yeah, it doesn't that doesn't always work out like I want it to. <laughs> oh man, oh this is a long ass one, isn't it? All right, well that's all right. We'll put it in there anyway, because uh, yeah, because we can and we will and we do. So, I actually put the time into the. I actually put the time into the request list, uh, just so I would know it was a long ass song that I'm putting in there. Ah, <laughs> oh, yeah. So right. <laughs> yeah. All right. We'll throw that one in. Why not? Why not? That's that's a good one. That's a good one. All right. Let me uh, do a little quick math here. <laughs> That's 18, 18, 18, and, and 6 is uh, 24. All right, 24. Well, we'll go with that. Um, ba, 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 ba. Where was I? Where was I? Where was I? All right, right, right over here. Okay, everything looking fine? Everything looking good? Yep, everything good. Everything good? Everything good. Just making sure sometimes I get a little, a little messed up. 24. Uh, that would give me until... Yeah, okay, I got it. <laughs> oh boy. Okay. Um apparently and I and I mentioned this article mainly because of the fact that you may want to prepare for upcoming price hikes in certain food substances. Uh this is on inforum dot com. Inforum. Farmers in region super edgy. Spring work proceeding slowly as wet, cool conditions continue. This posted on uh, May 7th, so just uh, last Tuesday. Here it is. Um, Fisher, Minnesota. Paul Wagner on Monday, May 6th, pulled into a field with his red and white case tractor, vertical tillage machine in tow for the first time this spring. Wagner from Fisher is one of a handful of northwest Minnesota north and northeast northeast North Dakota farmers whose fields have been have been dry enough to support his farm equipment. 
Wagner spent Monday incorporating fertilizer into a 30-acre field. After a long winter and a cold, wet spring, it was good to be working in the field, Wagner said. I've been waiting to get back in, in, the, in the tractor and play in the mud a little bit. Uh, Wagner hopes to plant within a few days. Hopefully it warms up a little bit. We don't need rain anytime soon. The forecast for the next several days is for dry, cool weather. Highs are expected to be in the mid to upper 50s and lows in the uh, low to upper 30s, according to the National Weather Service anyway. Uh, in Minnesota, 2.1% of the state's wheat had been planted as of the week ending May 5th, compared with 13% last year and the five-year average of 37%, so way below average. Uh, that's according to the Minnesota Agricultural uh, Statistics Service. In Polk County, little field work has been done, said Heather Dufault, uh, Agricultural Extension Educator for Polk and Red Lake in Minnesota. These guys are trying to scratch and open the ground to get some air down, she said. Dufault had no reports, had heard no reports from farmers in East Polk County who had been seeding, she said. The farmers are super edgy. They're getting very antsy. They're ready to go. And much of the same story of Crookston and uh, Eldred, Minnesota, where little progress has been made in the field. Farmers did a little tilling 10 days ago, but then it rained and farm equipment has been idle. Uh, it's way later than usual, he said. Farmers are concerned about the setback, but should be able to catch up quickly, hopefully, once the weather warms. If it does rain this week, and if we can get the temperatures up in the 60s, and if it stays sunny, we'll have the guys going. Cold and wet. Warm temperatures are needed not only to dry the soil, but to increase the soil temperatures. On Monday, in North Dakota Agriculture Network recorded the average bare soil temperatures of 42 degrees at Grand Forks Station, the historic average being 48 degrees. The minimum soil temperature at which wheat could be, should be planted, is 40 degrees. The NDSU Extension Service said, uh, meanwhile, the minimum temperature for corn, soybean, and dry edible beans is 50 degrees. Optimal soil temperatures for all four crops are about 5 to 10 degrees warmer than what they are right now. Across the river in the, in, uh, red, across the red river in North Dakota, the combination of last year's wet fall and a cold wet spring this year has delayed planting in Mayville area. There haven't, they haven't been able to get in at all. There were a couple days, uh, days away when we got the last blast of rain. Farmers hope to get into the field by the end of the week if it doesn't rain in the next few days. I don't think that much will be planted right away, but there is field work that can be done. So while the field in the neighboring Grand Forks County has also been minimal, further north in Walsh County is underway. There are a fair amount of guys going to the lighter soil if you go north of Park River. Uh, farmers in Hoop Hoople, North Dakota, uh, area have seeded potatoes, sugar beets, and wheat. They're a little behind normal, but it's not extremely late by any means. We're optimistic we can get a lot in this week. The weather this week will be a key factor for crops of farmers across the region. Anyway, well, what this all boils down to is the fact that... Um, you're going to be paying more for stuff, uh, for food, for various food substances, because, uh, well, they're not going to get as much planted. That means they won't be able to harvest as much, and you, in the, in the fall and winter, will be paying more. What? <laughs> I don't know what the hell they're talking about here in the chat. But yeah, for a damn global warming. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, so just bear that all in mind as uh, as you're going forward. And, uh, uh, all right. This I found um, a little disturbing. And maybe you will as well. I don't know. 
Um, but it is a little disturbing. This is posted on Futurism.com. Sneaky bacteria can swamp genes, making them immune to antibiotics. A newly discovered gene in, gives infectious bacteria the ability to survive even the strongest antibiotics. Cornell University biologists found the bacteria gene MCR-9, which, uh, when activated, makes bacteria resistant to an antibiotic bi biotic of last resort, called colistin. According to research published in the journal MBio on Tuesday, if bacteria with the gene were to spread, doctors could find themselves facing a dangerous and perhaps untreatable superbug colony of the traveling genes. We'll give you the bad news first. MCR-9 is highly mobile. Per the study, bacteria can swap genetic information into their DNA and the readiness with which MCR-9 is transferable means that this antibiotic resistance could rapidly proliferate, rendering existing treatments all but useless. If you go to a hospital and this gene is floating around, that can be trouble. This gene is movable. It jumps, says lead researcher Martin Wademan in a university-published press release. In treatments, if colistin does not work, it literally could mean the death for patients. If colistin resist resistance spreads, a lot of people going to die. Now the good news. Identifying the gene responsible for colistin resistance means that doctors can screen for it when admitting a patient to a hospital. Measures like these could help uh, the, keep these MCR9 equipped superbugs from spreading while scientists try to develop new ways to kill them off. It don't sound good. It don't sound good at all. Uh, my, my best advice to you on something like this would be, first off, stay out of hospitals. Don't go to a hospital unless you're, like, bleeding out or something. Unless you're sure to die, stay away from hospitals. Um, if you got a broken bone or something, you know, maybe, maybe. But uh, you, you definitely want to avoid this. Um, and and another, my second thing would be, stay away from humans. Humans are nasty. <laughs> so, so stay out of hospitals, stay away from humans as much as possible. Um, if your kids are going to a public school, uh, you know, I don't, I don't know really what you can do if you can't find a way to pull them out of the public school and, and, and save them in that way. It, it's just, it's, it's a dangerous, it's a dangerous thing. Wow, uh, Vanna White, that was a really slow uh, uh, time on, the, on getting that, that previous uh, link out there. Vanna White, one of our bots here in, in Really Witty Media on, on, on Freenote, uh, yeah, took uh, minutes, <laughs> three minutes to bring up a title for a, for a link. That's weird. All right, anyway. <laughs> oh, boy. Um, okay, we got to do our last set here, or we, we being me, I, you all, freakers people. Because <laughs> as I said earlier, yeah, I got one really long, really long uh, video in this set. Not this first one, but you'll see it, you'll hear it, uh, and, and it's the next one. So uh, here we go with this, in joy. Yeah. <laughs> Bad Travers, Pat freaking Travers there, doing his version of Black Betty, man. Let me tell you, that's good stuff. Uh, anyway, <laughs> before that, we had Eric Sardinas and Get Down to Whiskey. Hey, if you ever get a chance to see Eric Sardinas play live somewhere, man, don't pass it up. Don't miss it. Uh, you will love the Eric Sardinas show. Uh, that's from personal experience. I, I I can't. I don't know what's in, what's in your brain, but uh, let me tell you, he puts on a hell of a show. And we kicked it off there with uh, the final countdown, the epic swing metal cover, uh, Connor Engstrom music. 
yeah, it's it's an interesting take on the old uh, final countdown track. All right, folks. Um, tomorrow, tomorrow, tomorrow is Saturday, which means you get to listen to the Dork Table at noon Eastern, which is nine o'clock Pacific for those of you time challenged. Yeah, the Dork Table with a Flash and probably maybe. Another person involved? I, I don't know. He tries to get, pick up a co-hostage there for his show, so check out Flash. And then on Sunday, I will be on at the same bat time as Flash uh, on, a, on, a, on the same bat channel, but uh, a different day. Doing the blues. We'll be doing the blues here for about three hours or so. Uh, and we'll be playing trivia right here in the chat. If you like trivia, if you like the blues, this is the place to be. Ain't no other place to be. <laughs> and then uh and then uh after me will be Hal Anthony behind the woodshed opening up the big old can oh a whoop ass. I'll be back again on a Monday evening at seven PM Eastern for Grim Leftovers. Uh check the schedule for all the rest of the shows here on R L M and if you want to do a show here on R L M, let me know. I'll I'll get you set up, get you going. And uh, we love to have you. By the way, uh, thanks to everybody that hung out here in the chat and listened on the stream or uh, watched the video. You guys are great. You guys are awesome. And, uh, oh, by the way, um, I just want to mention this. And I don't I don't know if or exactly when it's going to happen. Um, and it may be in two weeks. I'm not sure. Moose Girl said a date of when it's going to happen that she... Uh, we'll be going up to Harmony Park, which is up in our old stomping grounds up there in Minnesota, uh, for a festival. And on that weekend, on that Friday night, whenever that happens, um, I'm going to take that Friday night off, too. So there won't be a Freakers or Balls to the Wall, whatever night that is, when she goes to Harmony. Why? Because I can. And it's been a while since I've had a Friday night off and done nothing, so I'm going to take one. <laughs> we'll see where that goes uh, anyway thank you all for tuning in peace